Okay, so we're going to set things up for the left eye, so just popping your chin up there for me. Now when you move it over to the left, the machine will automatically gear for the left eye. So again, you're doing your fine controls here. And we hop back in here, the machine says, do you want to test the patient again? You just click on OK. The laser should start up. And when you're moving it forward, you want to ask the patient to look off to the right of the box, looking for a little green light. So there should be a fixation target. If you have a patient who's an amblyope who can't fixate properly, there is an external light that you can use and you can turn it on or have it as a, as a flashing light. So we're going to leave that off for now because we don't really need it. So we set it up and just blink a few times for me because we want to make sure the lashes are just touching. Now we're going to go back to the screen while we fiddle with the focusing and make sure we get it nice and clear, which it is. As long as the green bar is green and, and preferably above 40%, then we're good. So blink again for me and just hold that there nice and still. Keep holding now. Keep holding just another second or two. We're almost done. Good, you can blink. Perfect. Have a seat back. Now you may get some patients that have dry eye and you'll find that they can't keep their eye open for that long. If that happens, you can put in some tears. What I like to do is you can almost kind of trick the system. When the scan is resetting, you can see when it's taking a scan, it takes three sweeps. When it's resetting, you can get the patient to blink in between the resetting. And quite often the machine will not pick up on that and it'll still give a very good scan. So that's kind of a way you can get around it. So when we hit the X up here, it's going to ask us if we want to calculate the topography. We're going to say yes. It usually takes a moment or two. And we're going to have to do the same thing with this eye. We're going to have to set the, uh, the parameters for the optic nerve head. And what's really nice about the HRT is it actually gives you um, an indication of whether the nerve is small, medium, or large. So same thing, we can look at the 3D rendering. We can also look at a quality control check, so it tells us in general what the, what the quality of the image was, if, if we want that. So again, you want to make sure not to put this right out to the edge of the PPA zone. So you want to try and get it in around, and I do tend to look at the Z profile when I'm doing this, but sometimes you just got to eyeball it. And what we're going to do... You'll just look at the color differences? Yeah, the color differences is a, is, is a good one, but the Z profile is sometimes quite hard to, to judge, because when you look at the profile there, it's not very clear where you should be putting the edge. I mean, clearly if you go out here, it's not very good. So the best advice I've gotten on this is to put it where it looks sensible and then look at the markers on the 3D rendering and make sure that you don't have any of the markers falling into the cup. So I'm putting a few too many markers here, but let's just arrange this here. So we're going to just say accept contour. So then we're going to jump in here and we can see that's not bad because we're not getting any of the markers falling right into the cup and I think we're pretty good there. So you don't want to go too far out on the PPA zone. So then if we go back here uh, the color coding here, by the way, red is the cup, blue is kind of the um, flat area, and, and green is above, and you can see there's a little blue line right there. That's called your reference plane. So what, what the software basically does is it takes a nerve, turns it on its side, puts a cross-section across your, on the reference plane, and creates a color-coded map here. So then, when you go and you print this out, or you want to see a preview, you click on the right, and you go to examination report, you go to preview, and it should show you a preview of what the printout is. So the first thing we can tell is that Michael's optic nerves are small. Uh, he's got moderate cupping, 0.49, 0.36. Now keep in mind that's a linear cup to disc ratio. So it's not a raw cup to disc ratio. It's linear taking into account the size of the nerve. That's important because big nerve, big cup, small nerve, small cup. Okay. So small nerves with moderate cupping. So obviously we're more worried about that when we see a small nerve with a moderate cup. Uh, no significant asymmetry. How do we know that? Because we're getting green ticks the whole way down the middle. So statistically, there's no significant difference between his eyes, which is good. Um, it also looks at the asymmetry in the, in the retinal nerve fiber layer profile. So it takes the profile here and the profile here, superimposes them, and basically asks how different are, there, are they. And there's not a lot of asymmetry. There's only 7% asymmetry between his eyes. So that's a good sign. So, and the report up here is saying that the image quality is very good on both. So if we print this out... We do not get any change analysis on Michael because we've only done one scan.